Six Prince Door Family Salute, man. Y'all see what the thumbnail is. What the title says is not good news. Not even a little bit. Rest in peace, Dr. Larry. I literally just found out from another YouTuber. I had my comments go crazy. As y'all know, I've kind of been taking me a little break, pulling back, not making too many videos, not making any videos, really. Just taking a little uh, YouTube pause for the cause, I guess you'd call it a, maybe a mental health break or something. I don't know. Jack, what's up? No doubt. Uh, literally, everybody's been wondering where I've been, where I started at the uh, last of November, 1st of December, my daughter got really sick. And when my daughter got really sick, I took her to the doctor's office, then I got really sick. I like, literally was having to take care of her while I was throwing up everything. And we thought we had COVID, but luckily that we did not have COVID. I think we might have had the flu or something like that. I lost some weight. She was doing really bad. And uh, during that time, Mr. Larry was calling and checking on us because that was one thing that he was terribly afraid of. Scared of no man in this world. Did his life sentence, everything. Ended people's lives. But he was scared of COVID because he knew it was real. He knew it was something that he couldn't control. And that's why him and I had started, stopped making videos together because we like doing them in person. And when his first hit, he really wasn't going around anybody he was staying in quarantining doing everything but just like all of us y'all time went on and things relaxed you know uh, you start seeing people beat covid you start hearing about it so a lot of us not taking it serious anymore right now and you know i'm literally i am be honest with you i hadn't even talked to dr larry since new year's told him happy new year's and that was it just been doing my life you know uh as a single father it's hard you stay busy you don't have time to chit chat with everybody and keep up with things but one of the worst things is to find out that somebody just passed and you didn't even talk to him on his last day or for the last two weeks so that's gonna be something i always regret you know sorry about that but they literally did say it's true y'all mr larry succumbed from the covid19 the one thing that he, the one thing that he kind of uh, was afraid of. So you know what, Mister Larry was not a coward or nothing. So I, I guarantee you, he fought it every bit, every way. But I also watched this take out my grandmother too. They were the two strongest older people that I knew, man. So this is rough news, as y'all know. Doctor Larry helped me start the channel. Yeah, he was literally. Here from day one you know what i'm saying he started his channel hell when dr larry did that lockdown 23 and one interview he called me and asked me if it was okay if he even did it because the man told larry that he wasn't even allowed to mention my name how about that death we know you did that mr larry said that larry said tim i don't feel right about that man but i need my chance i said go ahead larry no big deal man you know i love you knock that shit out that's the type of friend i am go get your chance man they don't want to mess with me i still do my thing and he went and did it i was proud of him then here comes lockdown 23 and one larry gave him two interviews he deleted the second interview disrespected mr larry with that one so that was crazy that's why they stopped fucking around oh yeah that telling that dude's shady bro The most he he ha ha dude on here are the most fake fake and shake ones you know what i'm saying that's why you ought to always respect mr larry because larry would tell you how he feels or what he thinks or what happened or whatever be damned the consequences he didn't care you know what i'm saying if you didn't like what he was saying go get another channel he'd tell you that right to his face i'll do the same but I'm going to be real honest with you. Texas prison stories right now is changing my life. 
you know what I'm saying? Like literally, we're doing big numbers. I haven't made a video in two months. Still got 15,000 new subscribers, millions of views. You know what I'm saying? We're doing numbers right now. We're about to hit 51,000 subscribers. And, uh, you know, hell, I probably shared out Mr. Larry's first 50 to 100 videos for him. Did everything I could, man. And I was very, very proud of him. Like, literally, he went from an older man that never even had a smartphone to working computers, laptops, and Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying? Samsungs. Think about it. Brilliant man. And I still have his book that he gave to me by hand. You understand? I got that for life now. 27. Okay. I'll be ready for it. It's the 25th. I literally still have. <coughs> See? <clears throat> See, that's the deal. No disrespect to anybody, but I didn't interview Mr. Larry on no park bench. None of that shit. Mr. Larry came to my house, sat with my daughter, ate dinner with us. You know what I'm saying? He, he was he was close, closer than just a friend. Mr. Larry told me stories about family members that I had in prison from back in the old days that I never knew about, that we never even talked about. You know what I mean? Like, and this is how it goes. Uh, I seen what Diamond Stone said something in his live a minute ago that Larry told him that we stopped talking. It wasn't true. There was times where we would go a couple weeks without talking. Yeah, he sent a text. I wouldn't answer back. He'd do me the same way. But hey, he was trying to get his movie lined up. And I'm raising a three-year-old. That's just how it goes. You know what I mean? So hopefully they were really going to do a movie about Mr. Larry. Hopefully this don't stop. We actually needed more. You know what I'm saying? Dylan, you got his book too? That's what's up, man. Hell yeah. Brother, I didn't throw shade on nobody, brother. Get out of my fucking live with this. This ain't about that, honey. That's the reason kind of why I took a little mental break off YouTube, y'all. Like, literally, I've said it a million times. And I would tell Mr. Larry, because you're a content creator, because you have a channel, you don't owe anybody anything. You know what I mean? If you're sick, if you're not feeling good, if you're not happy that day, if it's not pleasing you, don't come on. Don't make a video. Don't force yourself to do this shit. Because you will deal with weirdos, trolls, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. And that was something he had to learn about, too. But thankfully, Mr. Larry did not have a lot of that happening. And uh, he can just rest in peace. You know what I mean? Kaden, this is the deal. Mr. Larry, oh, uh, man, when did he come and do the videos with me? I believe that was 2020. When Mr. Larry came to do that video, he was literally off his intensive supervision probation for two weeks. And nobody would answer his calls or let him come on their channel. That's how this all even started anyway. I literally had two videos on TPS. He left a comment saying he liked those two videos, and he did 42 years. I hit Larry back, and I said, well, you know, hey, I am trying to start this channel. Would you like to talk? We talked on the phone while I was at work in my 18-wheeler. Talked all day. He literally knew some of the people that I knew, knew a family member, so many people. The very next day, I was sending Mr. Larry a ticket, telling him, come on down. You know what I mean? Like, literally put some money in his pocket, brought him down. The good food, man, look, me and Mr. Larry, when they barbecue, a seafood, Chinese food, anything that I could think of that a man missed in 42 years, we went and did that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just all make a video. Shit, no. I took the man to his beat, to the beach for his first time. A lot of things, man. And he lays me up with just a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, a lot of good advice all the time. And he loved my daughter. See, that's one thing. Mr. Larry loved Ella Rose. So it's going to be rough, man. And there wasn't no shade on Diamond Stone. Shout out to him for even letting us know. Michael Bay, yeah, well, when Dr. Larry was first trying, he literally did contact all the big channels. And they didn't really want to hear from him. He didn't know why either. And later we did ours. 
And I literally, I myself had contacted Joe from After Prison Show. I contacted Big Herc. I contacted uh, Lockdown 23 and everyone. All of them previous to Dr. Larry going on there, trying to get him on the show, not trying to get me on there. Like, and they were sending us cold shoulders and ghosting us. So we really don't know what was going on. That's kind of how we had to just start our own thing and do it ourselves down here. And that's what we did. I'm just glad that the man got to be free. Larry got to have a woman, got to have a nice house. Larry had a nice Mercedes at one time, nice Cadillac, he had all kind of shit. Got to take a couple little trips, had a nice house. You understand? He got to live his life the way he wanted to. But it's unfortunate because, like, literally, uh, December, when the YouTube check hit, actually it was in November, I'm sorry. When the YouTube check hit in November, he wasn't making a whole lot of money or anything. And he did do the Diamond Stone interviews. And his shit just took off. And when he called me, when he got his little thing, he called me. He was like, oh, man, it's working now. It's finally working, Tim. And I was happy for him. I said, yeah, cool. Thanks, Mr. Larry. I'm glad you helped me, and I'm glad I helped you. You know what I mean? There's never a time that we were just going to tie our channels together. None of that. Sometimes we would even be friendly competition. How about that? When he started, when he uh, started blowing up, trust me, he was sending me his stats saying, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I was happy for him going, man, I'm proud of you, man. Good. Never even sent a mind back. Sorry, people are calling me about this because I was I was happy for the man. You know what I'm saying? YouTube be damn. I'm still a truck driver and a welder. And he was a lifelong prisoner that didn't have. I mean, he had degrees and everything. Like literally, he could qualify for many jobs, but it was his background. You know what I mean? Michael, he wasn't he wasn't showing him off to be hateful or none of that. He was showing him off because he was proud and I was I was proud for him. You know what I'm saying? Like it was literally blasting off. <clears throat> when he did the lockdown 23 and one thing, he didn't see any results from it. Almost nothing happened when he did the Texas interview. Things blew up for him and changed his life. So that was good. That's what this shit should do. See, if you're on you, if you're on this YouTube. You should be trying to change people's lives, not ruin people's lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I try to tell these troll people. <clears throat> and see, Mr. Larry was the main guy that would get on my butt and be like, Tim, why do you even care what a troll said? Why do you care about this, that, that? And I would, I would literally have to admit that I don't care. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I don't. But Larry and I had made an agreement with each other as friends a long time ago to never respond back to any of these people. You understand that's why neither of our channels will ever mention a troll or something like that. We just don't do it, you know what I mean? So he he totally kept his himself. That was his goal. He said he never wanted a guest, never wanted an interview. He wanted to do it himself because he knew the most. And I had to agree with that. And already I can't believe it either, man. J.O., that damn COVID, man. It got Grandma, and then it got Mr. Larry. You know what's crazy? My daughter threw up on me six times last night. I just got back from the UTMB Pediatric Clinic. They had to do a flu test and a COVID test on her this morning. And she's got a fever, so I hope she's okay. Mad Max, brother, you see what it is, man. Just the bad news. I wanted to let everybody know because I know a lot of Mr. Larry's fans are right here. And that's where they're going to see it. This is where he made his debut and everything. You know, when me and Larry did those interviews together, they hit over 100,000 views. We just literally, I re-uploaded them, and then they never took off the same. That's how it goes, but hold on a second. Let's see something, y'all. So, y'all, one of the classics. Why everybody liked Dr. Larry so much, man. What's the facts? 
Stories family, thank you. Welcome again, y'all, to another episode. Here we have Mr. Lee A. Larry, PhD. Show me book, Mr. Larry. We need everybody that's watching this, man. If you support anything, support this. Go buy that book. It's at Amazon. It's awesome. He's the only inmate to ever write a book that's been used as a college textbook. It's right there. Go get your copy, y'all. Thank you, Mr. Larry. On the last video, we talked about an unfortunate incident that happened under the building tending system where, uh, you know, life was lost and a man had to go do what he had to do. But uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit to 1984, right after all that type of stuff happened. And we had another unfortunate incident. Mr. Larry, tell us what happened. Uh, I had sold this guy some wine. And he was drunk when he bought it from me. He bought a gallon of wine for ten dollars, and he dropped it and spilled over spilled over half of it. He came back to me and wanted me to re replace the wine or give him his money back, but he dropped it himself. And uh, so we had some words. Well, he did all the talking. I didn't say anything. I'm in the right. So I went to work the next night. I'm in the shower, showering. I'm naked. This fool walk in with a with a damn sword and a towel, pull a knife out, tell me some shit about a hey, I just stabbed a motherfucker on Darrington unit. I'm not I wanna let you know I'm not afraid of you like the other guys. I'll kill your ass. And I was up for my first parole in nineteen eighty four. So I hold on, hold on, hold on. So this man come up, are you kidding me? This man here pulled a sword out on you yes. while you're butt naked in the shower. And you're up for parole. Yes. Oh, my God. First parole. First parole on a life sentence. How old were you about that time? Uh, 30, 34. 34. You've been in since 22. You're ready to go home. Yeah, I should have been up for parole, but I lost so much good time catching all that damn disciplinary. So they backed your parole up a little Back bit. Backed my parole up. Okay, so listen, man, as a man in this penitentiary, when men do what men do and all this type of stuff, he pulled this sword on you. How close were you to parole? Well, I had, I was waiting on the answer. Oh, you already seen him. You're I already on seen him waiting on the answer. Okay, so when did you get your answer? Uh, that happened on a Wednesday. I got my answer that Friday morning. Oh, you got your answer two days after two he days. pulled this sword on you? What was the answer? Uh, denied. Obviously denied, huh? Oh my God. First parole, life sentence denied, man pulled a sword on you. I know you were pretty upset about that. And so uh, that night he was sitting up, uh, the Houston Rockets had just went off. They had just got Elijah Warren and Ralph Sampson. And we was, I was at work. I worked in the night laundry. And I already had my property pack. I know what I'm going to do. So I came in. He was sitting up watching uh, the news after the, the Rocket game went off. And uh, I walked around. I had a knife, but we had these steel dust pans. Had about a three foot handle on it. It's made out of solid steel. So I went over there and got the dust pan, came up from behind him, and I just started beating his damn head. He tried to beat his head off. With the dust pan? With the dust pan. Did he fight back? No. Nice. First blow, he was knocked smooth out. Head bust wide open. You already had your shit packed. Already packed, ready to go. That's respect right there, Mr. Larry. That's called you knew what time it was. And then uh, when that happened, listen, now we're in 1984 now. When they're prosecuting people, though, this is the problem. What happened? Uh, they took me to, uh, to Ed C. They indicted me. Uh, I went to court, selected a jury, all white jury. I had a guard come to court and testify on my behalf. I had white, Hispanic, and black inmates testify. They seen him pull a knife on me, and I was found not guilty. So he did pull the knife on you, right? As you were, he's, so listen, let's back up, because you didn't quite explain this right. And I know we're on camera, we get a little nervous and stuff, we respect this. You tell me the story. When that man seen you coming, he knew what time it was too, though, because obviously everybody knows you got Texas Prison Stories family, thank you for returning, y'all. We have Mr. Lee A. Larry, 42 years on the inside, a real Texas OG here, man. He can run down so much stuff. Show him your book, Mr. Larry. 
Mr. Larry is the author of Islam Demystified. It's published on Amazon.com. It's also used as a college textbook. He's the only inmate that's ever wrote a book that's been a college textbook. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Thank you. Thank you for coming down to Galveston, too. We sure appreciate you, sir. Listen, what we're going to do today right now, and the entire point of this Texas prison stories is that we've had so many men die, life's on ruined and everything, and nobody's talking about Texas here. So we're going to bring some light to things people don't know. Mr. Larry, there's a gang that I know about that I think nobody else in the world knows about called Texas Mafia. You remember those guys? Yeah, I remember Texas Mafia. Now, what are they called? TM? When the TM? TM, yes. Is it true that they were up under TS? Or they ran with them? What was, how was that work? They were independent. They were independent? Independent. Okay. And who they, what were their members like? Uh, they had uh, mixed members. They had a couple of Hispanics. They had a couple of black members, but it's a predominant white gang. So, tell you, yeah. Uh, Texas Mafia white gang had a couple of blacks and Mexicans in it? Yes. How were those guys? Were they hardcore? Just as down as the white guys. Down, were the white guys down for them? Yes, TM was not a racial game. They killed anybody. They didn't give a shit who you was. They, yeah. they, they, they didn't go by race. They go by, if you got any business, you was out of there. That's it. All right. All right. And uh, man, TM now, we don't hear a lot about them. What happened to them? I'm going to close that right there, y'all. <clears throat> I'm going to get up out of here, man, because this is difficult for me, too. I'm well over 35 friends now passed away. Very few of them from this illness, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, pretty much nobody from this uh, illness other than my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Here comes Mr. Larry. So it's uh, something I got to compute a little bit right here, y'all. But I want the youngsters that are watching this to take Mr. Larry's number one message, what he would tell you at all times. Do not join gangs. Be a man of yourself. And don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Live your life. That's what Mr. Larry would tell you. From the bottom of my heart, man, thank you so much for helping me start this channel, Larry. And helping me change my life, man, for the better. And taking care of my daughter a lot better, man. Congratulations on the success you had. And be blessed because I know you was a man of God. I'll see you later. Dr. Lee A. Larry, rest in peace, brother.